How does my commitment to truth, uh, what does it do when it, um, it, it collides, not just with perspective that the person has, but with perspective that is deeply tied to their own uh, identity, deeply held beliefs. And I think we can see that um, in many, many areas of life, but certainly religious domain is one domain where we see that. After all, uh, unless you are just uh, nominally um, belong to a particular religion, if you are deeply committed, religious commitments are commitments about the most fundamental values that you have. They define the very character of you as, uh, as a human uh, being. They provide you with a criteria which you use to assess what is valuable and what is not. They're the kind of the ultimate thing. Uh, that's not just religious truths. For instance, if you take philosophy of Nietzsche, um, but by the way, I, I'm a Christian, but Nietzsche is my favorite philosopher. philosopher. I used to read Nietzsche for devotions. Uh, <laughs> I, I, had him on the, I had him on the bedstand, and, and I would always read a little bit of, a little bit of Nietzsche, uh, because I thought he was absolutely spectacular, and all wrong and absolutely spectacular. <laughs> Um, and I still continue to read him and teach him. I find him, uh, I, we've become really good pals and disagree most profoundly on things, right? But for him too, for his philosophy too, right? He was about new tables of values that he wanted to, to establish, right? Those new tables of values, everything in life is evaluated on the basis of these new tables of values. That's why he said, crucified against Dionysus, right? Dionysus against the crucified, the two tables of values. Now, is it possible to pursue the question of truth while respecting the identity of that person? Well, I can tell you, my Paul Nietzsche and I are, are doing really well, <laughs> right? Um, I, think, I think I can, right? It's possible to do that because both of us, and I think that's true of Nietzsche, both of us are deeply invested, not simply in our position, but in truth. Truth is something that transcends us. Truth is not something that we claim and desperately hold onto, but truth is something that takes us into freedom, that moves us into itself, rather than we being possessors somehow of the, of the truth. And once you perceive things in those, in those terms, I think it's possible then that you will wrestle and wrestle deeply while at the same time keeping friendships, affirming the other person, providing space for other person. If you ask me, is it a good thing that there, are Nietzsche, that there was Nietzsche in the world? I'd say, yeah, it's a good thing. Even though they disagree with, with Nietzsche's position, even though it's contrary to a Christian position. I think so, right? So, kind of affirmation of the goodness of the existence, of the validity of a person, while at the same time engaging in very rigorous discussion about whether that's um, on, on issues that, uh, on which we, uh, we disagree. I mean, difficulties, of course, become when it becomes a political nah, issue, nah, when nah, we nah, make nah. decisions about how do we map the, the social space, because every claim to truth is also a claim of, for territory within the social, social mm -hmm. space, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think then the question becomes, well, uh, is it possible for us to be truth seekers while at the same time being social pluralists? And I would say for myself that absolutely I am a pluralist, social pluralist, because my commitments to the Christian faith. I'm not social pluralism as a compromise to these beliefs. And maybe we don't have time here to, for me to develop the, the position, but actually pluralism as a political philosophy was developed by Christians. And it was developed in the 16th century, uh, early 17th century, by sectarian Christians who believed most strongly in their positions, but just for that reason, believe that the other person has to have space to live, has to have right to articulate those positions. First person who articulated this as a public political philosophy and enshrined it in the Constitution was Roger Williams in Rhode, uh, uh, Rhode Island. 
uh, again, a highly particularist uh, Christian who believed in the truth of his convictions, but just for that reason was a pluralist. I think we need to be in the position of this sort where each of us will be pluralist for the particular reasons that each of us as religious or our religious people have. Mm -hmm.